servant this morning to bless these your people, dear God. I realize, dear God, that really and truthfully it is a privilege to be here by you, dear God. Lord, really and truthfully nothing will get puffed up or proud about you. Lord, just to be used by you, dear God. Lord, I pray right now, dear God, that you would just touch the hearts of your people right now, dear God. Prepare their hearts for what it is that you have to tell them, dear God. And dear God, just use me, dear God, like you want to, Father God. Lord, I decrease you. Lord, so you may increase in me, Father God. It's my prayer, dear God, that your people see only you and none of me. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that you just touch my mind, touch my heart, touch my soul, dear God. To utter only that which you have in you to me. It is in the mighty, blessed, and wonderful name of Jesus that I can pray. Amen. 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 Uh, this morning, I don't know why, amen, this morning, uh, but I, I, I feel led that God brought me right back to a scripture that I preached previously, uh, but he showed me something else to pay attention to. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6. Word of God says, so we built the wall, and the wall was joined together to have its height, for the people had a mind to work. Amen. So now I want you to turn to your neighbor, amen, and I want you to give them a real big, pretty smile, amen, if, you, if you're not too weak, amen. And I want you to tell them these words, neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, oh neighbor. With the help of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, preach, will preach from the subject. From the subject, I don't mind. I don't mind. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. As we look at the text here, uh, we find uh, Nehemiah, who is God's servant. And we already set up what happened with Nehemiah, and just do a brief uh, introduction as to who Nehemiah is and what happened and kind of get us to this point. We know that Nehemiah was a prophet of God, and we know that Nehemiah was one who really truthfully, who had a heart, he had a heart to serve God. And what we've got to understand, God used Nehemiah in a time where God's people, God's chosen people, Israel, uh, they was in a bad fix. Um, they was in a bad fix because of some decisions that they had made, some things that they had done, and they had turned their heart away from the will of God. And it put them in what we call bondage, and they went into Babylonian captivity. And what happened was when those that raided them and invaded them went in they destroyed Jerusalem. Jerusalem was destroyed along with the wall. And in the passage right now we have Nehemiah, he got word that the wall was down, that people were kind of discouraged, that things weren't where they should have been with God's people. And he grieved him, he heard his heart. And he went to the king. He had a noble, noble, noble position uh, in, in, in the king's court. And the king allowed him to go back and build the wall. And here it is, you have Nehemiah building the wall that was what torn down in the city of Jerusalem. Now, when we look at Nehemiah and we look at what he did, it was something great. Because really, truthfully, it was only God that actually helped them to do this. Because really, truthfully, how many of you know when it, it's something that seems kind of hard to do, you know it takes something extra for you to actually go forward and want to get it done. All right? Well, when you look at this passage, how many of you can say that there are some things that need to be done that really the average man will say, oh, I am worried about that. Right? If you think about a wall around a city, okay, think about that. Right? 
And Nehemiah wanted that built because he knew that was something that needed to be done for the city. And Nehemiah had it in his heart to do it. And right here at this point, they had built the wall up to halfway. Right? Collectively had built the wall up to halfway. That is an accomplishment. That is something, that's a testimony. And that says that guess what? Nehemiah put it in his heart to do it and he got God's people together to get it done. And it's amazing to see Nehemiah at work in this text. But I want to draw my attention to one key phrase. The last part of the scripture. For the people had a mind to work. That's all, that's all we're going to deal with this morning. And the people, for the people had a mind to work. The people had a mind to work. Got three things for you, amen, and I'm going to take my seat. Amen. Don't plan to keep you long, amen, but if I do, I'm going to lose you. When we look at the text, it says, for the people. Now, understand this one thing. The text is not just talking about anybody. The text is talking about the people that were on board with doing what Nehemiah wanted to get done for Jerusalem. It says, the people. Right? So watch what I want you to see here. When it says the people, you got to understand the people in this text had a common goal and a common aim in mind. And they weren't just working haphazardly. They were together because why? They had something that they were working toward but collectively. Right? The people. The people. Right? And we know this was God's people that actually were in exile. And now coming back to fix to fix the wall. Okay, preacher, what are you trying to get? The people, right? Well, how many of you know, really truthfully, when we look at the people, we can put ourselves in the text. Who passed the us? Us. See now, I don't want to give the wrong impression. Okay, I don't, I don't promote, I don't promote hate, I don't promote racism, I don't promote treating another group of individuals the wrong way just because you don't like the way they look. But I do believe that when you have a common connection as a group, that guess what, you are not letting nobody else make you feel bad about it. So when you look at us, us us has got history. When you look at us, us have a common bond. When you look at us as a people, you got to understand that really truthfully, if you go back in time and look up to now, can I help somebody up in here? It'll let you know that we as a people, that God used us and he made a way out of the way. Us, us, us. We, us, as a people. Now,
But us as a people, well, Pastor, help me out. What are you talking about? Well, us as a people, really, truthfully, we don't even trust one another. Society. 
society, culture, history, slavery, Jim Crow has done a doozy on us. That's all that has happened. But what we've got to do in 2019 is understand that guess what? We can move on and we can move on correctly. As a people. Now, I want to help some of y'all and I'm going to move on. See, we can't blame mother for, for stuff. And we ain't got our stuff to do. as a people. You know what bothers me? And I'm just saying, some of y'all gonna disagree, some of y'all gonna say you shouldn't say that, some of y'all gonna say it's a touchy issue. But how many of you know that really truthfully, the percentage, the percentage of us's that kill us is way higher than the percentage of other folk of other persuasion killing us as well. And you know what we can't do? We can't take grandma fight because it ain't the same fight. Grandma couldn't go to school. Grandma couldn't get a decent job. Grandma couldn't go to, to the, uh, uh, the school she wanted to. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
But get what? He was useless. But let me show you what the amazing thing was. And I told my wife this, and it was amazing. We worked from 7.30 that morning to 4 o'clock that afternoon. Nobody got paid. Okay, check me out. We worked from 7.30 that morning to 4 o'clock that afternoon, and there was some issues. We worked from 7.30 to 4 o'clock that afternoon, and the work got done. Now, you had people coming to try to get their stuff that might have been in this room, but everybody that was working together say, well, we signed up for it. We thought we were going to be gone sooner, but we're going to get it done. And I got to honestly say, it was a pleasure doing it. And it was us. Things didn't go quite like it should. Business might not have got handled maybe the way it should have been handled. I mean, everybody got their own opinion. But at the same time, you got to look at it this way. Will I sit and be a part of the problem or will I be a part of the solution? Black folk, we got issues. And if we do stuff together, we gonna have some issues. But what we gotta do, when we have the issues, work through the issues, and get the job done. That's all. See, they had a mind. The first one is this. That was a tribal enterprise. That was a tribal enterprise. Tribal enterprise. A tribal enterprise. Folk from the other persuasion leave an inheritance. We tell our children, you're gonna get it like I got it. Now, so you got to teach them how to work so when they do get it, they know what to do when they do get it. But we should be handing down businesses to our children. Amen. We should be passing on legacies Amen. to our children. Amen. We should be taking our children in and showing them what we do for a living. Amen. And them carrying on what it is. tribal enterprise. And they were able to work together to get the job done. They got it done. They, they, they wasn't without hard and pain, but they did it. Okay? Here we go. Since the people had a mind. Let the people say mind. mind. They had a mind. Say mind. mind. They had a mind to work. some jobs, praise the Lord, amen, hallelujah. And there's some people who have a mind to don't work. Anybody knows, you know, folk that work hard at not doing nothing? But they had a mind to work. What does that mean, Pastor? That means that when work needed to be done, it was over. Personality traits. 
people who are goal-oriented, right, sometimes seem insensitive to people who are not. Because what they worried about, guess what? They ain't stuck about what you think about. Because you know why? They're not just looking at the right there. They got a further down the picture that they're looking at. See, they have a mind, they have a goal, they have a vision, they have a direction, and they're trying to get from point A to point B. Now, if you worry about something that really won't affect them getting from point A to point B, they're going to really treat what you have to say like it ain't about them. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Just understand that, guess what? They have a mind to do what they've set their mind to do, and they're not going to let nobody and nothing stop them. Right? Here we go. So why? They had a mind to work. We know in the text that they had a trial in one hand. And they had a sword in the other. Right? Because they had something to do. They had something to accomplish. Right? They had a mind, a mind, a mind to work. I was able to coach basketball this past year. Didn't like the way the season ended, because many of you know that I, 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 I had to go to the hospital, amen. Didn't like the way it ended, didn't want it to end the way it ended. But at the same time, it ended the way it ended. But at the beginning of the season, I looked at the fellas that came out to play. And they was all my height. Right. Y'all can laugh. It was all my height. Right. And I'm like, no, what am I going to do? I know what I'm going to do. We may not be taller than anybody, but no, no, we're going to run folk in the ground. We was running a mile before practice. I had to come up with some kind of strategy so that when game time came, that at least I had some kind of strength. Right? Where you going with this, Pastor? See, how many of you know that when you have a mind, to do something that you're not going to just do it haphazardly. That you know your end, you know your target, and you know your goal, and you're going to do everything you have to do what to get to that goal. And I can remember for our January, we played the team. And I think that coach thought he was going to run game.
Kalau lu gosok ni mana? Hmm. Kalau lu lucu kan? Kalau lu lucu. But you better put some pepper in your step real quick. Because why? Because when I'm truthful, it does your heart great joy to see your children do what they do. They're excited about doing it, and they do it with some kind of oath about it. See, you gotta understand that in the text, it's not just talking about just doing something. It's really talking about doing a work with excitement, with enthusiasm, knowing that the end result is something you can enjoy. Okay? Help me out, Pastor. It's kind of like this. Anybody in here ever built, ever built a new house? I haven't had the luxury of doing that, but anybody in here ever, my show you, okay, you built a, a new house, you can't build. When you build, when you're building that new house, right? Okay, Brother Dennis, when you were building that new house, did you have some stands that came along with it? Okay, you had some stands. You can agree with that? Okay. Well, why you didn't do it? Oh. Perfect answer. See, they quit because that's what you want. That's what they got to do with the text. Got everything to do with the text. See, the, the work that they're talking about in here, they wanted the wall built. So no matter what came, they were going to do what they needed to do to see the wall finish. Help me, help me, Pastor. You see, that's why the scripture that says, as unto the Lord, don't make sense to some people. Why it don't make sense? You know why? Many times, folk don't see what's in it for them. So really, you get a work, right? But it's not a, a work that really looks like something. It's just something that they're doing. Right? But you've got to understand that really, truthfully, when you look at something that you really want to get accomplished, can I help you? There's some things in your life that you're going to go after, and guess what? President, nobody else, me, the person sitting next to you, ain't going to stop you from getting it because you know why? I'm going to get it done no matter what. See, the work in the text was a work that they wanted to see what they wanted to see the end result. That's why the old children say, when I go and I stand before the Lord, I want him to say, Thy and wow, as unto the Lord. So when you stand before him, he can say that. Wow. Right? Because that's your goal, that's your aim, that's what you want. You're shooting for. And when you serve, when you do ministry, guess what? It's on a level that folk don't understand because guess what? I'm not working to please you, even though you might like what I'm doing. I got somebody better than me and an answer to me. something bigger than yourself. Because you want to see it come to pass. And I just watch, you know, I watch television a lot, you know, and my wife, you know, I get on the third, I watch the, the DIY channel, you know, that the But I get inspiration from it. Anybody ever saw the show Pool Kings? But I've seen that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Y'all, blow my mind every time I see it. Every time I see it. The person might have a big backyard with nothing might look all messed up, right? And they decide to build a pool in that backyard. And the people that they get don't just drop a box in the ground 
day to day that rascal. And what amazes me is how they lay it out. They get the layout, they plan it out. And there was this one show where the couple kept messing with the guy, kept messing with the guy, kept messing with the guy. And the guy, he was good at first. Like, yeah, they just concerned. They want to make sure everything is right. Mm. By the middle of the show, you was kind of getting a little aggravated. Mm. The voice changed, right? Mm. But you could tell the couple just wanted the thing that you wanted to be right. Okay? Didn't stop. It kept going. They wanted to see the end result. And when they saw the end result, I didn't think the dead lady, boy, she was, she was, she was, yeah, she was a high mess. I didn't think she had that kind of crowd. She was by the end of that show, when she saw that pool, that was a cry like a baby. Right? But you gotta understand that, guess what? Her main objective, her main goal was to see that pool look like she wanted it to look. Mind, mind to work. See, mind to work is not just misguided. Mind to work says that I have a target and an aim and something that I'm true for and a vision that has been laid out. And now, guess what? I'm going to do all I can and fight to get it. Okay, Pastor, what's the last point? There was a task for enthusiasm. There was a task for Enthusiasm. A task for enthusiasm. I see what we got to always remember. What we're, what, what we're motivated by. Right? We should never ever let pleasing others be the sole purpose of our motivation. See, when it says the people had a mind to work here, they were willing was really to do the will of God and get that wall back up, take care of Jerusalem, and get back to where God really wanted them to be. They had a mind to work. And as I close, I just want to kind of summarize what I've shared with you. When we look at ourselves as a people, as a group of collective individuals with common things, relationships. We've got to understand that as a people, really truthfully, that we cannot walk around as if we are the lesser. We can't allow ourselves to feel inferior to anybody. But never walk around like you're superior to no one. Because really truthfully, we got to always look at we are all God's creation. And people of God and us as a people, we got to do that. We ain't got to say amen, I know I'm right. We got to do that. And one thing we got to do better at is this one thing. As a people, we can't no longer make any excuses. Not on the Because the same opportunities, the same things, whatever it might be, you have access to. And you serve an awesome God. You can't walk around saying you love God and you serve God and act like you're helpless and ruthless. I'm going to quote Martin Luther King. He said, You're going to be a street sweeper. Be the best street sweeper that ever lived. It's called self work. I tell my children, no, go on and get sweeping the floor. Do it right. Look for trash. Don't just pass the broom. Look for trash. I just 
messed up somebody up in here. I'm just trying to help you, that's all. So you won't get a holiday no more. Amen. Amen. Why do you always have to me? Why do you always have to do it? You won't do it right. And I hate using that word, but that word, it means something. Okay? You ever heard of take pride in what you do? Right? That's figurative, y'all. Right? That don't mean we pride for and walk around like we've done something. But that phrase just means do it with a spirit of excellence. So where when you can look back on it and be like, wow. That's awesome. And as a people, what we have to do, we have to really and truthfully work on having a spirit of excellence, togetherness, working together, and understanding that we can't walk around with no symptoms. Also, having a mind, I want to help somebody in here today. Don't let your life be a life of just existing. Let your life be a life of goals and aims and vision. Don't just occupy space. Have a mind to work. And even if you don't have much, can I help you? You don't have to have a whole lot to have a vision. She can't totally rely on me. 
Can get what I might be dying out one day. And if she saw it, relying on me for motivation, she and I'm dying. <laughs> Pray the word of God has blessed you.